Hi guys, Mark Wood here, Director of Instruction at Chichester Golf Club and also World's Best Golf Destinations. And today I've got a great video tip for you. And this is all about helping one of my Facebook followers, a guy called Mark Patrick. He sent his swing into me, which we're going to take a look at in a second. But he's really struggling with keeping the ball on the fairway. He hits a big slice with the driver. So we're going to give him some ideas of what he can do. But first of all, let's take a look at his swing and then we'll jump back into the studio with some ideas of how we can help Mark out. Hi Mark, many thanks for uh, sending your swing in for a um, analysis. Um, and like you said in your uh, direct message to me on Facebook, that you tend to lose the ball out to the right. So I'm going to just give you a few ideas with that. I'm going to jump back into the studio in a minute and uh, get in front of the camera and just give you a few ideas of what you can do. Now, obviously camera angle, you've kind of um, got this pretty much sat down on the grass and um it's you know it's not quite down your toe line so as i look at your heel line um your heel line is going out to the to the left of um target line but you might be aiming down that way anyway you might be aiming down the, the left side slightly purely from the fact that if you tend to lose the ball to the right a lot of time i see you know golfers very much aiming down that left side of the golf course because they know that ball's going to steer back towards the middle of the fairway and um, we all know that you know, obviously, if you have a swing path that is, you know, generally kind of geared to going left and you tend to leave the face open to that path, then that's what creates a curve. So the number one thing I would start with, I would start to have a look at your um, your body alignment line. And I would want you to sort of try and get yourself um, just a little bit more kind of square on. So, you know, try and get yourself a little bit more parallel to target line. And that's with the feet, the knees, the hips and the shoulders. So. Um, the best way to do that is also, you know, lay a club down on the ground and lay a club just outside the club head and the ball and get those two uh, two lines sort of parallel to each other. And then you can start to make sure that your toe line, your knees, your hips, your shoulders and your eye line and even the arm line as well are all kind of syncing up in the parallel to that target line. Now, obviously, we haven't got any like launch monitor numbers on this. Um but as I take a general look at the swing, I would say that your posture is really, really functional over the ball. You know, you're nicely leaning over from the pelvis there. The knees are nicely flexed and the arms are hanging straight down from the shoulders. So I'd say that your distance to the ball is looking pretty good. So uh, that, that's all looking nice as well. But I'd definitely get you um, set up a little bit more square on the target line. Now, if we start to take a look at the backswing as that club um, comes back into the takeaway, um, pretty efficient you know again because of camera angles and where you're aiming you know it it would look as though you're taking it outside the line on the way back but in reality you're you're just swinging down your body alignment line and by the time you get back um, parallel to the ground you know you are pretty much um, you know going parallel to your toe line so I just need you to confirm are you aiming down the left side because of that slice or is your target down the left side there but you know, the, the takeaway is not too bad. You go up to the top of the backswing. I'm loving the club face position, by the way, and I'm loving that left wrist position at the top of the swing. You look as though you put a very, very good rotation in there. Again, at the top of the backswing, your, uh, the shaft angle there is slightly laid off in terms of your um, body alignment line, but that's not a big issue. But like I said, I really like that left wrist angle and, you know, the, the left arm, again, because the camera angle is low and it's kind of more... Sort of down your heel line so to speak the left arm's going to look high but this is where it all starts to unravel for you the club comes out very very much out in front of you so your left arm gets outside your lead shoulder quite quick um, the shaft angle gets a little bit steep and then the club starts to come out in front of you quite a bit and that's when you can start to send your swing path um, out to win across the golf ball and generally speaking like i said earlier on in this little video um analysts with you um you know that is why you're going to get that cut slice spin on the golf ball purely from the fact that you're getting that club path going out to in and coming across the golf ball so if i just draw say blue line target line your club is coming across the ball this way very much in this direction out when leaving the face open now the reason you know why you know some of that's happening is you need to start to learn the transition in the downswing so i'm going to give you a few ideas in a minute 
when I jump back into the studio, what you can do just to try and get that club more behind you on the way down, that, that club shallowing out more on the way down so you can deliver it a little bit more down target line. And it wouldn't be a bad feeling for you to feel as though you're swinging a little bit more into out. But another thing I see here, and this is due to the, the downswing, is how much you come out of posture. So you really start to come out of posture on the way down. So if I just draw that up your spine angle there, as you make your backswing up to the top, like I say, it's pretty functional. Um, but then as you come down, we know the club gets out in front of you quite a bit on the way down. The shaft angle starts to steepen out. And ideally, we want to see that shaft shallowing out more. But look at this on the way down. You now start to really kind of stand up out of your posture. So you're coming up on your tiptoes there. I can see that your left heel has left the ground. So you're very much in your toes coming into impact. That's going to affect your rotation through the ball. And, you know, again, it's going to get that path going very much um, to the left as you go through. So really standing up. Now, if I can give you the feeling of the club shallowing out and coming more behind you on the way down, so you're approaching it more on an end to out path, you're going to be able to maintain your posture better and you're going to be able to rotate through the ball better and that's going to give you a much better path through the ball. Now, I'm just going to put in next to you um, Ollison, uh, who's had a tremendous year, played Ryder Cup. Now, if we look at his setup position, very dynamic, and you can see body alignment nice and square on, feet, knees, hips, and shoulders all parallel to target line there. And that's what I want you to start to gear towards. But you'll see here, you know, how these players really shallow the club out on the way down. So great rotation in the backswing by Ollison. And then the club is really shallowing out behind him. So you can see I really like this position here where we're deep into the downswing, coming into the delivery position. Body, body is rotating open with the lower half, but the shaft angle is nicely up the right forearm. And from there, the club head is nicely behind him. And then he's then going to come around shallow. And that's hitting pretty much from the inside there. And that's going to be a draw. He hits a, a natural draw shape. Whereas with us, like I say, we, we get that kind of standing up in the downswing. But a lot of that is dictated purely from the fact of how steep you are in front of you. So the club goes out in front of you quite a long way. You can see the club's coming down through your right ear there, gets outside the line. Body's having to stand up because you're creating quite a steep angle of attack coming down. And what I mean by that, if you were on my flight scope, I would probably start to see an attack angle of about um, sort of minus... Um, three minus four down into the ball and we ideally want to be hitting up on it but yeah so you come out come over the top quite steep on the way down path is going left so you're having to stand up to accommodate that because otherwise you're going to be plowing that club into the ground um, so yeah let's jump back into the studio and see if we can give you a few ideas around that Right, so as you can see from Mark's um, setup, his setup's actually really functional. You know, he sets up with good posture. Unfortunately, I haven't got any video from Face On. He, he didn't send that in to me. But he's set up from down the line. The body alignment looks parallel. Posture looks good. But as we've mentioned in the video there, you'll see that as he makes his goal swing, the left arm gets very much out in front of his left shoulder, what I, chose, what I term as lead shoulder. So the left arm gets very much out in front of him and then that creates that big out to end swing path. And we all know that if you have that big out to end swing path, you tend to leave your face open to that path and boom, that's when you're hitting those big, big slices. So what I'd like you to do, Mark, is I would like you to get into your setup position. I would like you to take the club up to the top of your backswing and get the feeling that you're laying the club down behind you. Literally go to the top, let the club lay down behind you, let your hands drop, then spin the club out in front of you. And you can see instantly when you're doing that, the difference, the club path is now coming on a much more into out path. Great way for you to feel that. So literally up to the top, lay the club down, let it drop, spin the club out in front of you. Now, if you had a wall at home, then I would get an old club, or you could turn the club upside down. So I would take the club up to the top and I'd put the grip onto the wall, drag it down the wall, then let the grip spin out in front of me. So up to the top, grip onto the wall, down the wall, spin the grip out in front of me. And that will give you the feeling of, of really improving the delivery of the club through impact. Now, another one that I've used, which has helped golfers tremendously get rid of their slice, it's just a visual of, of how you're lining your shoulders and your eye line up at the address. Let me show you. Now, if you put an alignment cane down on the ground, which is parallel to target line, 
So we'll say that's pointing at 12 o'clock. I want you to put another alignment cane down on the ground, which is pointing at one o'clock. And the idea behind this mark is I would like you to literally make your setup where you have your toe line parallel and square to that blue line, the 12 o'clock cane. And then I'd like to get your shoulders and your eye line going down the yellow cane for me, which is pointing at one o'clock. And then from there, I'm going to have that fear then that I'm swinging down my shoulder line and my eye line. So I'm swinging very much into out. And you can go as far as literally putting a cane down on your target line out in front of you, literally 15, 20 yards out in front of you. And you've got to get the feeling that you're swinging to the right of that cane. Now, a lot of people don't like the feeling of swinging to the right because if they're hitting a slice, they want to kind of say, look, why, am I, why do I want to feel as I'm swinging out to the right? Because I'm trying to get rid of that slice. But you know in golf, it's a game of opposites. The more you swing left, the more the ball can potentially spin to the right if the face is open. So you've got to get the feeling, if you want to start to bend the ball back or start to hit the ball straighter, we need to move your swing path from being this way to more this way, okay? So just by changing your shoulder and your eye line and giving you the feeling that you're swinging down your shoulder and eye line, you're now going to start to change your club path massively. And then, I promise you, this has helped loads and loads of golfers. So you set up to the ball, toe line square to the blue cane, shoulders and eye line going down the yellow cane, and from there, swing down your shoulder and eye line. And that will really get you hitting more from the inside. And the beauty about that is, you're now gonna get that feeling that your left arm is staying behind your lead shoulder. You're not gonna to go to the top. A great way for you to feel the wrong way would be shoulders go open, eye line goes open. So I'm now standing with my shoulders and my eye line this way. I swing to the top, swing down my eye line. That's my bad approach. That's where the big slice would come in. My good approach, shoulders off to the right, eye line off to the right. From there, swing down my shoulder and eye line. Perfect. Soft draw on that one. So Mark, I hope that helps. And guys, don't forget to thumbs up the video. Don't forget to post your comments below. And also, if you want to send your swings in to me, I'll pick a swing once a week. And then we can do a similar thing to what I've done with, with Mark here today. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's completely free. And I really appreciate your support. Many thanks for watching.